Hey everyone, it's the Vigilant Christian Mario, and you're here for another edition of New World Order Exposed. In today's video, I needed to absolutely share this awesome video that was done by Red Pill Revolution on the topic of the Ebola deception vaccine agenda fully exposed. Now, I've been covering the Ebola issue for a little while here on this channel. I've covered one angle that this could possibly be used for depopulation. Now, there are so many other angles that are coming up as we investigate these things that I absolutely needed to cover it all. My theory in the beginning was that they would even bring this stuff into the country. I mean, they're evil enough that, hey, they don't care. Why not even bring the actual disease here? So then they have to do martial law. They have to give us vaccines. They have to do it all. You know, create the chaos so that they can give us the solution. This is their methodology, and that is how I thought they were going to do this. Now, the more I analyze this, it's very possible that they're not even going to bring this in, that it's an actual hoax, and that's pretty much uh, kind of the way the red pill sees it here. Uh, and his warning to us is actually about the vaccine and I have to say that he's probably right about this and we need to absolutely investigate what is going on so I had to play this awesome uh, expose by Red Pill Revolution just to be a warning to people that we need to stay vigilant as to how this is going to unfold. So what I'm going to do here in today's New World Order Expose video is I'm going to go ahead and play this expose that was done by Red Pill Revolution on the topic of the Ebola vaccine. Lots of information to cover. It's a 23 minute video. I'm going to comment and stop as we go along, uh, but I do highly recommend that you share this video to raise awareness. So thanks so much for tuning in. Let's get into it. Hey guys, RPR back once again reporting on the real truth on this Ebola situation. The real truth, your corporate mainstream media of course won't tell you and as it stands right now, also much of the alternative media as well because in my opinion there are many... And that's another thing that I've been starting to notice here. So as we move ahead, we're going to recognize that more and more the quote unquote truth movement is going to be absolutely infiltrated and taken over by disinformation controlled opposition agents. Um, now, the more we look at like InfoWars and other quote unquote, you can pretty much say they're like the mainstream alternative media now. They're really pushing this like depopulation Ebola thing. So they're on that. So it's very interesting to notice that. And we also have to take account that that is occurring when we look at this thing, that there are some alternative people. Now they could be deceived. Here's the thing. You need to be also careful, you know, to call someone a show and a sellout because they could also just be people that are just normal people with a YouTube channel, you know, just some Joe Blow and they just are not seeing the issue correctly. So there's that too, but there are definitely controlled opposition uh, agents among us. We know that. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Let's start paying attention to who's saying what and possibly who could be used to further the agendas. Sources and many people confused on this situation or are buying into this Ebola fear. And the truth is, guys, is it is all manufactured fear. Okay, it is blown way out of proportion hyped up etc and for a reason for an agenda and that's what I'm going to fully expose here in this video uh, so my investigation continues into the Ebola rabies vaccine and the developers behind this vaccine and the others currently in trials uh, to supposedly potentially fight Ebola right and so what I have found here that I'm going to show you guys is quite quite shocking, disturbing, and telling. Okay, now before I go on, I want to make something perfectly clear for anyone confused. Some have come on my videos on this subject thus far um, and are a little confused because in my opinion, they are too hung up on the word zombie. Okay, again, what we are talking about here is a possible zombie virus. If you're a little bit lost as to why he's talking about an Ebola zombie virus, there is a video he did covering the possibility that they could be manufacturing a rabies type of virus that would give the individual the appearance of what would look like uh, them to be a zombie. Like they would just go into an absolute rage and it's like a rabies so they're foaming at the mouth and you they would just eat people's faces off. Remember the whole bath salt incident? Well, that's probably testing that went horrible for this type of vaccine now or, or virus. What I'm going to do in a video probably right after this one, I'm going to play I'm going to do the same thing I'm doing for this one. I'm going to uh, share with you his zombie video. So stay tuned to the channel. The next video that I upload or maybe one or two after will be on this very subject. So 
if you're a little lost, you can go check his channel out right now, but I will cover it in a little bit here because that's another thing that's going on. And also it's been shown to us through Hollywood and that is something I need to cover absolutely because this ministry is to cover how movies are used to brainwash people for satanic agendas. So it looks like with movies like 28 Days Later, Legion, a ton of movies. Think about all this movies coming out right now with like this zombie virus theme. It's crazy. There's a mind control happening there. I'll expose it with Red Pill in a video coming up, but just wanted to point that out. First. And we're not talking a virus that would create some magical undead person, your traditional undead zombie. We're talking in terms of rabid cannibalistic behavior and tendencies, and which we all know is possible, has occurred, as I have covered in my last video with the real cannibal attacks of 2012, right? And in my opinion, those were, te those were test subjects, but, uh, but that's, just, that's just me. But uh, so I showed that. And so, yes, traditional zombies, as far as I know, is not possible. I know that. We know that. <laughs> uh, so just need to emphasize that. OK, so as I've covered, there's a huge vaccine trial campaign being conducted by various companies right now. Uh, several vaccines in the pipeline. But this is spearheaded by National Institutes of Health, NIH and GlaxoSmithKline, GSK, all right? And it's really important you guys familiarize yourself with these companies, you know, remember these names so you can identify and expose them, right? So keep GlaxoSmithKline in mind as I move along here, and we'll go back to them in a minute. Now let's take a look at this, the zombie apocalypse according to three respected scientists, okay? And actually, let's go over here. Um, this is a college newspaper for St. Mary's... Uh, College of Maryland called the point news here and according to chemistry and biology double major Stephen Reese we are closer to a zombie apocalypse than we think yeah according to this guy and uh, right here this actually took place back in 2012 early 2012 January 2012 zombie apocalypse according to a chemist psychologist science major so let's read about it here in the first natural science and mathematics colloquium of the semester, in which not an open seat was to be found, the three departments combined to discuss three main components of a zombie apocalypse and what it would mean for humans, biological plausibility, the chemistry of basic survival needs, and the psychological aspects of survival. Reese opened the lecture discussing what exactly a zombie virus might biologically look like. Though Reese claimed that we actually have no idea what a zombie virus would look like, through looking back in history, scientists have come closer to finding possibilities. Now, an Italian physician first recorded a condition with zombie-like symptoms in 1594, which was rabies. Reese explained the two different types of rabies virus, furious and paralytic. Furious rabies symptoms include fever, irritability, violence, aggression, and salivation, etc. While paralytic rabies symptoms include depression, confusion, hallucinations, and disorientation. But though such symptoms like biting others, biting other people, and foaming at the mouth, which all lead mostly to death, were recorded, the disease usually is only recorded in Africa, Asia, and South America. Also, human-to-human -human transmission is highly unlikely. However, the viruses known to humans, like Ebola viruses, could have an epidemic ability to significantly affect the human population. The Ebola virus can cause viral hemorrhagic fever and other serious symptoms. But Rees concluded the virus is not easily transmissible among humans and is mostly in low sanitation areas. Now listen to this. But what if we were to combine the Ebola virus and furious rabies? Asked Rees. Taking the zombie-like symptoms of furious rabies and the often fatal Ebola virus, the world could see a rapid third world spread. Yes, indeed. Rees concluded that biologically a zombie virus is more than plausible. Um, but we're not done here. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So uh, the article here concludes by saying the jam-packed colloquium with 152 students in attendance was well received by the audience. First years Hannah Haffey and Jessica Farrell both enjoyed Reese's portion of the presentation most. Steve's was most interesting because it's crazy to think that they could come up with a disease that can cause a zombie apocalypse, said Haffey. It's actually very frightening. <laughs> if you only knew, Haffey.
And here's the thing, most people don't recognize how sophisticated technology is in our times today. The Illuminati does something that the public doesn't recognize. They hide technology. Do you think they're gonna come out and tell you everything that they've developed up until the very second it's developed? No, they've probably got us five, 10, 15 years behind on their development. These things are kept secret. Obviously too, there's the aspect that, you know, the American government doesn't want other governments to know how far they are advanced technologically because if you are more advanced technologically than other nations, that is a superior power to have over them. So all that to say that these things are very possible when you take into account that we are being lied to as to how far humanity is in terms of, you know, advanced technologically, how uh, things like this can actually be created. As you can see here, he's showing you an article and you have legitimate people that are freaking out because they're like, these things are actually real. So how much do we even know? It could go a lot deeper, but I just wanted to point that out that although it may seem like it's a crazy theory, we are very advanced in technology and where we are today. So these things are becoming a reality. Uh, the Bible talks about in the days of Noah, it was exactly how it will be like in the days today, the end times. And in those days, I truly believe that the fallen angels were working with humans to create all sorts of genetic modifications. They were messing around with the DNA and everything. And we're going to see this. We're going to see this, this advanced technology and science that is going to try to completely mess around with God's creation and also to create the superhuman race. But anyways, that's all side notes. Check out my videos. I talk about that on other things. Let's get back to the point if you only knew. So, wow, there you go from a random senior chemistry and biology double major from some random college here that not only is a zombie virus quite possible, but he curiously suggests combining Ebola with rabies could cause it. And this was back in January 2012, people. Extremely telling that he said this because, of course, as I've covered, we now have the rabies Ebola vaccine in the works as one of the vaccine candidates to fight Ebola. So now fast forward to today and not only do we have an Ebola rabies vaccine in development and being prepared by NIH National Institutes of Health and Thomas Jefferson University but the same NIH is also spearheading this vaccine trial campaign with the infamous GSK, GlaxoSmithKline, as they are co-developing one as well. Human trials of GSK's experimental vaccine, which Britain's largest pharmaceuticals company is developing with the U.S. National Institutes of Health, NIH, are to be fast-tracked with funding from an international consortium. Vaccines normally take 10 years to develop, but GSK said it hopes to finish the first phase of trials by the end of 2014. So do you see what's going on here? This is alarming to the max that they are going to be using the epidemic, the fear, right? So there's an agenda to fear monger if they're going to roll out a vaccine because you see the fear mongering will cause the public to desire the vaccine before there is even the time to actually test it. So then after they give out the, the vaccine and they're like, oh my goodness, look what happened. People died or they went crazy and we didn't know. Oh, well, we, we, you know, it wasn't tested and we had to roll it out because, you know, the Ebola scare epidemic. This is one of the ways that they could roll this whole thing out. So just be vigilant on that. There could be a lot of fear mongering going on for the very purpose of rolling out a untested vaccine onto the public. This is crazy, crazy that the National Institute of Health are going to be doing stuff like this. But when you know who controls the, the strings in the world today, it's no surprise. You don't say ladies and gentlemen there's something very very sinister going on here behind yeah. this entire ebola vaccine agenda I agree. this is what it's all about as you should clearly see by now yes glaxo smith klein a multinational pharmaceutical vaccine company one of the largest in the world largest in britain but this company just so happens to be as fraudulent and as corrupt as can be as well and this has been documented. Surprised? So what do we have on record about this wonderful consumer healthcare company headquartered over in London that currently holds the responsibility of creating a vaccine for the protection of the public from this so-called Ebola crisis, right? Let's see how much your government cares about you. I'm sure this company is very nice. Let's see, what do we have here? 
GlaxoSmithKline fined three billion after bribing doctors to increase drug sales. Now what I'm going to do here is just send you to my channel. There's a playlist called Healthy Living. I cover how we need to live healthy in our day today. And one of the things I do in that video series is I expose the fact that the pharmaceutical industry is corrupt to the max. The Illuminati own it. Our medical establishment is designed in a way that is to keep you sick. They make tons and tons and tons of money off of you being sick. And what we need to recognize is that uh, this is corrupt, and this is what they're trying to do here. Uh, they're trying to, you know, control the medical industry. So, an Illuminati company is producing a vaccine. Hmm. Huh. Guardian, you don't say. Sales reps in the U.S. encouraged to missell antidepressants, Paxil, and Welbutrin, and asthma treatment, Advair. Wow, GlaxoSmithKline has admitted to corporate misconduct in the U.S. Pharmaceutical group GlaxoSmithKline has been fined $3 billion after admitting bribing doctors and encouraging the prescription of unsuitable antidepressants to children. Glaxo is also expected to admit failing to report safety problems with the diabetes drug Avandia and in a district court in Boston on Thursday. The company encouraged sales reps in the U.S. to missell three drugs to doctors and lavished hospitality and kickbacks on those who agreed to write extra prescriptions, including trips to resorts in Bermuda, Jamaica, and California. <laughs> wow, you cannot get more scumbaggery, uh, more fraudulent, more corrupt, more disgusting than this company right here, GlaxoSmithKline. You can put them up right up there with uh, Monsanto, okay, and the rest of these evil companies uh, that are running the show here. If you don't know what Man Monsanto is, I've got a video, and actually Red Pill actually does a, a really good expose as well. You need to know these major companies that are being used by this secret society, this powerful elite group of Luciferians. Okay, let's continue. UK government accepts swine flu vaccine caused narcolepsy in children. Guardian, swine flu vaccine can trigger narcolepsy. UK government concedes. Review of fresh evidence find jab given to 6 million people in Britain can occasionally cause sleep disorder. Hmm, I wonder who created this swine flu vaccine. Let's see, let's see here. The Pandemrix vaccine, sounds like pandemic, uh, made by GlaxoSmithKline, oh, was given to high-risk groups, including children and those with asthma, diabetes, on heart disease at the height of the 2009-2010 swine flu pandemic. Across Europe, around 31 million people received the jab. The vaccine was made specifically to tackle pandemics and is very different to the normal seasonal flu vaccine, which has not been linked to narcolepsy. Yes, yep, lest we forget that GSK manufactured this pandemic swine flu vaccine, which resulted in hundreds to several thousand children worldwide developing narcolepsy. And guess what? This swine flu, their swine flu vaccine, their little baby here, was also fast-tracked, not properly tested. That's going to sound more and more familiar to you guys as this Ebola vaccine agenda moves forward. Um, and I'm going to show you that right now. But they used this. They used the children of the world as guinea pigs, okay, for an untested neurotoxic vaccine. Okay, the result, narcolepsy. And, you know, now the parents of children, uh, of all of these children, are battling with governments to get compensation, compensation uh, for the brain injuries, even to this day. Did you guys know this? Did you guys know that? Will you guys ever hear about this from your corporate nightly news when they are telling you not to worry uh, that GlaxoSmithKline is coming to the rescue with the Ebola vaccine? <laughs> Absolutely not. Never. I hope if you're new to this, you're beginning to see the real picture here. A new vaccine to prevent Ebola can't come soon enough. Next week. We're going to be putting this vaccine for the first time this is in propaganda. humans. 20 healthy adult volunteers in Maryland will get an experimental vaccine made by GlaxoSmithKline. Researchers hope it will trigger immunity to Ebola. The vaccine will also be tested in Britain and the African nations of Mali and Gambia. Human trials of other drugs are being expedited, too. 
are being expedited, that's not good. Fight an epidemic that at the moment seems unstoppable. So remember how they quote unquote fast tracked their precious swine flu vaccine here? Again, it might sound familiar because that is exactly what they are doing again with this Ebola vaccine, right? Ebola vaccine trials fast tracked by international consortium. Uh, Ebola vaccines racing forward at record pace, right? Fast tracking an Ebola vaccine may prove too slow. Hmm, I wonder what they have in mind. Can GlaxoSmithKline go from 0 to 150 on an Ebola vaccine program? Oh, wow. I'll leave you links for everything I'm showing you guys. I'm going to leave a thousand links under this video, okay? If you check in my description section, I'll uh, cut and copy those links for you to check out. It's a very simple business model, really. Create panic and you have your approval without proper... That's it, exactly. This is the Illuminati methodology order out of chaos. They will create, engineer, and then get, uh, the chaos, and then give you a solution to the chaos. They are on both sides of the, the equation here. They are creating chaos and giving you a solution, and they're both bad. Chaos and solution are bad, and everyone gets deceived this way. And we can see with the vaccine that it's basically being done. They're fearing, they're, they're uh, fear-mongering the uh, Ebola scare and then what they're gonna do is oh, no, you need the vaccine here. Take it testing Right, you see how clever and They can keep doing this because they know the public doesn't know or pay attention and They know that the corporate media that they have in their pockets and are in league with will never report on anything negative Surrounding these vaccine companies. Are you kidding me? You understand now? It's very clever very, very clever and very sinister. Good morning. That's right. We're joined by Glaxo's uh, chairman of research and development and vaccines, Dr. Monsef Slawi. Dr. Slawi, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Good morning, everyone. It would be wonderful if you could walk us through where you are in development of your vaccine. We hear timelines like 10 years to develop a vaccine, but obviously, given the scope of the outbreak in West Africa, you're accelerating that. Tell us how soon it could be developed. Yes, uh, well, a vaccine actually usually takes anywhere between 10 and 30 years to go from the idea to uh, being available at industrial scale and approved for human use. So here we are on GlaxoSmithKline's website, helping fight Ebola. Yeah, see, we are dedicated to improving the quality of human life by enabling people to do more, feel better, live longer. Yeah, I'm going to leave you guys some links, okay, uh, to, to their website here. You can look at their investors, um, their annual reports, how much money they make. Here's a PDF. You guys can uh, investigate further, okay? I think I've shown you enough and shown you what this company is all about. Now, let's get back to the rabies Ebola vaccine uh, for a second again. It doesn't only mirror the 28 days later film scenario, which is about Ebola zombies with rabies. And that's uh, something I said in the beginning here. I Am Legend is a movie that we see this plot being played out. What I'm going to be doing is, since this is obviously an agenda of the elite, I'm going to cover the movies. I'm going to be exposing I Am Legend, 28 Days, and things that expose the fact, or uh, movies that are really looking like they're being used to program the masses with this virus. Remember, I Am Legend, that's the movie with Will Smith. He's the left last in the world. It was his vaccine and everyone turns into this crazy zombie rah, programming. Flash rage. Uh, but the film with the same blueprint is I Am Legend. Uh, in case you don't know, this film features uh, this same scenario where you are mixing viruses, right, and genetically engineering a virus. Uh, to work for our bodies, right? And in the movie, it actually mutates over time and creates this new strain, right? That kills most of humanity in the movie. As you see here, it's called the Crippen virus. And the origin, the Crippen virus was genetically engineered from the... 
Now, for those of us who are grounded in the Word of God, we recognize that the Bible says that in the end times, there's going to be massive depopulation. There's going to be massive famines and deaths occurring. This is probably how the enemy, Satan, is going to achieve this through different things like depopulation through these vaccines that he's going to deceive people into taking and then will mutate later on and cause them to either die or to have some massively crazy side effects. So... When we look at these things, I know it can be frightening, but we need to stay grounded in the truth. And the truth is the word of God. God tells us these things are going to happen because he is God. He says, I know the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. And those that are in Christ have nothing to fear. We know that these things are to occur before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is coming back here to absolutely destroy Satan and the fallen angels. Those of us in the truth movement that think that we can overtake the Illuminati are being deceived. They are connected to demonic spirits. When we analyze the fact that they go to Bohemian Grove, we need to wake up and realize that they are into a very advanced form of spiritual demonic worship. There are actual demons to fight. So you are a physical being who is subject to the third dimensional reality here and you are going to die. You do not have the ability to fight off demonic spirits. The demonic spirits, the fallen angels who are here working with the Illuminati, giving the Illuminati their power, are beyond the realm that you are even capable of accessing. So if you are foolish enough to think that you can overcome them without the power of God, Jesus Christ, the real savior who will come here at Armageddon for the great war, there's a war coming and the Illuminati are going to face God and his angels and Jesus is going to come back in the sky with power and glory and he's going to take them and he's going to cast them into the sea and this entire new world order system is going in the fire with them and in its place will come the glorious kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have not accepted him, you you need to do that right now because these things are coming and they will come to pass and there is nothing you can do as a human being to fight off the demonic spirits which are orchestrating these events to happen you need jesus christ he is the mighty savior the messiah who comes in the world to save us by the blood redeemed on the cross so if you do not know him yet as your personal lord and savior and you're looking at the new world order you have not found the truth jesus said i am the way i am the truth I am the life. No one makes it to the Father's kingdom but by me. If you do not want to be in the New World Order system, you want to be in God's New World Eternal Order, His eternal glorious kingdom, you need to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Measles virus by Dr. Alice Crippen as a cure for cancer. Uh, KV at first appeared to be effective with no side effects, but over time... Over time, the virus began to mutate and cause rabies-like symptoms in its hosts. <laughs> Despite the military's best efforts to contain KV, it eventually mutated into a lethal new strain of measles with a 90% kill rate and went airborne. Well, the premise is quite simple. Um, take something designed by nature and reprogram it to make it work for the body rather than against it. You're talking about a virus? Indeed, yes, in this case the measles um, virus which has been engineered at a genetic level to be helpful rather than harmful. Yes, yes, very, very interesting, right? And little does she know she goes on to cause the apocalypse instead of curing cancer. And but, of course, in reality, there's actually natural cures for cancer, but uh, Big Pharma and the government will never tell you that. But any and that's very true. It's something I've covered on in my health series. There is a cover-up by the illuminated ones, the satanic ones that own the world. They also own the medical institutions, and they do not care about your health. They rather you dead. There's large profits in your disease, in the illnesses that we suffer as humans. And because we live in a world that Satan owns, he is the god of this world, and his little foot soldiers, his little puppets, peons here on earth, the illuminati, the the satanic followers of him that's what they're into so anyways let's take a look at another similar film quarantine and as you see here the sick are infected with a rare deadly virus in this case a mutant strain of rabies that causes symptoms to manifest within a matter of minutes and causes the carrier to react in a homicidal manner <laughs> yep and let's not forget that this rabies Ebola vaccine is being headed up by Thomas Jefferson University along with NIH, the same NIH working with GlaxoSmithKline, bringing you one of the other vaccines. And the guy working on this, named Matthias Schnell, 
here in a bleach white laboratory on the fifth floor of an austere building at Thomas Jefferson University. Matthias Schnell plays with biological grenades. Yep, 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 yep. And uh, he's working on this vaccine. He's going to bring it to us to save us, right? He's going to... He's going to offer his help with this, you know, in a in the race for the vaccine. He said the victory will go not to the fastest, but to the safest and most effective. It is possible that ours might fail, he said, but he doubts it. Wow, very confident, man. Well, here we go. And this is the schmuck working on this damn vaccine. And he, he just may very well be the the real life, right? Alice Crippen, right? This girl from I Am Legend. I mean, this is what we're dealing with here, people. This is reality. This is not Hollywood. This is happening right now. This is playing out in reality. So, it's just it's just mind-blowing, really. But and again, why I expose Hollywood is because movies are a form of mind control. People think they're just mindless entertainment. No, absolutely not. There is a satanic agenda with movies to condition minds of people with the agendas of Lucifer in our time. So again, this is fitting. With all of that covered, I want to show you guys one last piece of information here that I, I thought was quite fascinating and is a relevant connection here to point out. And it goes back to ancient Greek mythology with uh, this here, Lyssa. This is really fascinating here. Check this out. Lyssa was the goddess or daimona, spirit of rage, fury, raging madness, frenzy. Now, for those of us who are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we know through divine revelation from our God that there is only one true God. Any other God who claims to be God that is not Yahweh, the God of the Israel, uh, the Israelites, is a liar, is a, de is a deceiving spirit. And here we have a demonic spirit that masquerades itself as a goddess, obviously the spirit of rage, that's a demon, fury, raging madness. So I just want to point that out. There is definitely a demon behind this goddess. And in Animals of the Madness of Rabies, check out her name in Latin, Ira, Fuhrer, Rabies. Made Rage, Fury, Mad Frenzy, Lyssa. Lyssa was a figure of Anthenian tragedy. In this scene, she appears a woman dressed in a short skirt and crowned with a dog's head cap to represent the madness of rabies. This, this is crazy. This, is re this really blew my mind. Um, Lyssa was closely related to the mania, man, maniae, the goddesses of mania and madness. Again, when you're hearing about goddesses and goddesses of rage and mania and madness, we're talking about demons. Demons love to pretend that they are gods. They try and steal the worship away from the one true God and put it onto themselves. And they do that by manifesting in different forms to people to deceive them to think they're gods. So just a little Bible lesson, I think it's perfect. He's talking about these issues. So we need to recognize how demonic spirits operate. And again, this goes back to what I just told you. This is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with demons, quote unquote, goddesses who deceived people. They deceived the Greeks. The Greeks ended up worshiping these fallen angels as gods. When they weren't, uh, you had is uh, Israel who was worshiping the true God. And then you had the Greeks who were deceived by the fallen angels into thinking that they were gods, but they weren't. And yeah, just interesting to point all that out. Her Roman equivalent was various, uh, variously named as Ira, Fuhrer, or Rabies. Sometimes she was multiplied into a host of Ira and Fuhrers. So I don't know about you guys, but I found this to be disturbing and fascinating at the same time. I mean, we're talking about this Rabies rage connection here and the rage virus slash Rabies virus. Now, again, what Red Pill is pointing out that maybe he doesn't recognize is what I just stated. We wrestle against principalities and powers, dark forces. This is not a battle in the flesh. If you lose the spiritual dimension aspect of this battle, you're lost. You don't know the truth. You will not be able to discern this. As you can see, everything that's happening with the possibility, there's actually a demonic spirit behind it. Now, how do you overcome the demonic spirit that is going to deceive? Jesus Christ only. And then finding this ancient Greek uh, goddess, Lyssa, uh, being the personification of rage slash rabies. I mean, that just blew me away. So uh, I thought you guys might find that interesting as well. So if you guys want... And one little theory that I have about the end times and how I can kind of see this playing out, the elite want to open up the pit. They want to let the 
the the veil between the spiritual realm and the physical realm they want to try and make it non-existent so that the demons are actually like really manifesting in our world today that's what a lot of the illuminati's um, plans are to do to open up these portals these gateways for the demonic spirits to now have access and gain into our world as they've been initiating us into the occult over the last 30 40 years they've been opening up these demonic doors it is possible that if they were to unleash this type of rabies virus it would cause in that person the ability to be absolutely possessed we need to recognize that the bible says that pharmakia drugs are a form of sorcery so if we're going to get pharmakia from big pharma and then wonder why we got all crazy and possessed by the demon rage goddess hmm pharmakia it's sorcery check your bible god told us not to mess with this stuff and now we have a pharmakia company giving us a virus that would make us subject to being open to a demonic rage rabies vi goddess demon to possess people do you see the spiritual aspect of this? If you don't, you're not seeing it correctly and you need to seek Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ used to walk around in crowds of people that had physical eyes and he would tell them, those with eyes, let them see what the spirit is doing. Everyone has physical eyes, but Jesus was talking about a different set of eyes, spiritually discerning. And if you don't have that, you're going to get so confused in these end times. So confused. I want to read up more on it. I'll leave a link below. Well, we've all heard of the bird flu, and we've heard of um, tuberculosis, and we've heard of um, you know, flesh-eating diseases, and there's a number of things that have been going around in the media the last few years, including AIDS, which is still there, and, and now we have, um, even uh, strange as it sounds, we have a rise to almost an epidemic level now of rabies, which we typically associate with animals. But when it crosses to the human barrier, to the, the, the barrier between animal and human, crosses that barrier into the human, there is no treatment. There is no cure for rabies. Now, you may not have heard this. This is not necessarily new, but it's, it's coming to the forefront in the zombie apocalypse. Because that's exactly how people present themselves if you will, I'm speaking medically, but um, that's how they appear and how they behave is like a zombie be because of the effects of um, rabies on the nervous system. And you see, there would be a massive agenda then by Hollywood to fantasize the zombie issue. You notice how they're from the dead and they walk around with their hands out. It's all to brainwash you because what they're going to do is actually unleash a virus which is going to be a real reality, not people coming out from the dead and all this crazy stuff that you've been brainwashed to believe, but there's, like he's saying, the symptoms of rabies on a human can be exactly correlated to, to, per, to look like, um, you know, that the person is a zombie. Come on, people. Uh, <laughs> this stuff's crazy, but this is the reality. And recognize this as well. I truly believe that in the end times, that the way that the Antichrist will be accepted by the great majority of the world, the Bible tells us that the Illuminati Messiah will be accepted by a large majority of people. Even so-called truthers will end up being deceived because they are spiritually un un unable to discern and they will accept the Illuminati Messiah. He's going to come up in a time of absolute chaos. They're going to engineer the wor a nightmare, an absolute nightmare, and the world will be put in to submission and broken to a point of needing to accept this leader, this Messiah who's going to come in and save the day, order out of chaos. They are going to create the order, an absolute chaotic end time apocalyptic scenario, earthquakes and zombie viruses and martial law and, and monitoring and, and people ratting on people and wars and this and that. And then in the midst of that absolute chaos will arise. A, a world leader who's going to bring peace and let's all come together and become enlightened people. Why are we so separated? And everyone's going to be like, yes, because they're going to be so cr like at a point of brokenness and trauma that they will accept the Illuminati Messiah. Um, there were last year and even earlier this year, there were actually drills conducted by our government on the zombie apocalypse and how would, you know, first responders, police officers, 
Oh, so the government's preparing for a zombie apocalypse. Oh, but they'll tell you it's just fine. No, there's no such thing as a rabies virus that could be unleashed on the public. Like they programmed you through all these movies in order that you, when it does happen, are prepared, predictive programming. No, these things are not occurring. We're just doing these drills for fun. The soldiers like it. They think it's fun. Come on, people. Firefighters, paramedics, how would they deal with these people? So it sounds far-fetched to the average person who hasn't heard this before, but this is nothing. It sounds far-fetched to the person who is completely controlled and brainwashed by the world, by the media. No. Why would, if you're in a position of control, and of power, of ultimate power, why would you want people to demand a vaccine? Well, it's because something's in the vaccine that you want people to then exactly. have as a part of their body. Well, what is in the vaccine that you want everybody to have inside their body. So I hope you guys can see by now there's a bigger, more sinister agenda at play here regarding this whole Ebola situation. And I want to thank those of you who've stayed with me on this investigation from day one. I have several videos on this topic now, uh, going back several months. So what I've done for you guys, is, in case you have missed my previous videos on this topic, is I created a playlist on Ebola uh, on my channel so you can see the uh, research path I took on this from day one and uh, with that said I hope all of you can now see the bigger picture here and the real truth on this so thanks for watching thanks so much for watching everyone I hope this was a blessing to you and that you share this with people so that we can wake up to the fact that we live in the times prophesied in the Bible the New World Order is the Antichrist Kingdom. The Illuminati Messiah is being risen up. The environment that is necessary, the chaotic end time apocalyptic uh, environment that needs to be created so that he can rise up to be a savior to the world, that he can offer them uh, peace and love and joy and enlightenment and transcendence in a time of pure chaos is at our door. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the one who will come and establish his real kingdom here on earth. Do not be deceived by these things. These things are to come to pass before the second coming of Jesus Christ and his eternal new world order that will never, ever die, go away. It is the eternal kingdom of God. This is the Vigilant Christian saying, God bless each and every one of you. And as always, stay vigilant.